Good morning. Uh, today we are going to read a great poet, uh, Kim Chun Su's uh, long poem, uh, entitled Cho Yong Dan Zhang. As I said, this is a long nonsense poem. He had worked on for several, several years. It does not make, uh, I think it doesn't make sense to you right? at first sight. Uh, we cannot understand, uh, we cannot understand what he's saying in a conventional way. But as a poem, it is very beautiful. Uh, it is certainly a story of a moment in his life. Although it is difficult to follow what he's talking about, it is certainly showing what he's feeling and what he's thinking. Uh, it is a kind of automatic writing, which the Yeats, the Yeats couple did, uh, the result of which was published in his uh, collection of essays, A Vision. Uh, Kim Chun-soo, Kim Chun-soo's Cho uh, Yong uh, Danjang is a series of poems, short poems. Uh, I think he is telling a story in images, uh, a story of his boyhood. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, very impressive and emotional. Uh, it is, uh, it's diction, it's very precise and calm. Uh, and it is very moving. Uh, it is a story of a boy, uh, which is the author himself. Uh, and uh, he was uh, talking about a boy and a girl. Uh, uh, there was a girl uh, uh, who is a mutual friend of uh, Kim Chun Su and the boy Kill. Uh, and the boy. Uh, it was very, uh, he, he was killed by a truck uh, because uh, he, he uh, played a very dangerous uh, play. He uh, uh, rushed to the uh, center of a street uh, where the uh, truck is rushing and uh, he, he was standing on the road and at the last moment he uh, escaped the, uh, being hit. He played it, he enjoyed it, but one day he failed to get out of uh, the, way, uh, uh, the way, and he was killed. And this is the story of the boy. And so we are going to read the uh, poem. And uh, also, okay, uh, let's uh, have a look at the poem. Uh, as, you, as I said, Kim Chun Su uh, was one of the best poets in modernist Korea, and Cho Yong Danjang is his masterpiece. This poem is, however, problematic because it does not open up if the readers approach it in a traditional way. So I, just, I suggest we see each poem as a tableau or a picture uh, with beautiful images. That is to say, it is a picture poem which is symbolic, allegorical, psychological, biographical, as well as modernistic and postmodernist in form. I analyze it beginning with uh, Kim Hyun's reading and suggest how to better read it. Uh, in this essay, I'd like to read the Kim Chun-su Cho Yong Danjang, part one, the songs of Cho Yong, and understand what it is because when you read this poem for the first time, it is not easy to understand what the poet intends to say. An eminent critic, Kim Hyun, succeeds in reading much of the poem. In fact, he is one of the first and best critics who have attempted to deal with it fully. Kim Hyun was well versed in Freud's theory. Much of the reading of this poem, uh, Kim Hyun did, is insightful. But the fact that Kim is, in the main, looking for meaning in the poem must have been a little problematic. No matter how hard he has worked on it, some essential part of the poem always remains closed. The poem is more than he thinks it pure. It is purer than he has thought and analyzed. In this way, the significance of the poem lies not only in the poetic diction. It is in something else. I offer a suggestion of how to read it. In my conclusion, because for better or worse, we, we compared with Kim Hyun, live in, an, in a new age with new art and theories. I think the theory and practice of new art are trend Non-figurative painting is applicable to reading Kim, Kim, Kim Chun-soo's Cho Yong Danjang, part one. 
To give you a whole picture of the poem, I translated two prelude poems in 13 sequences into English and give it to you. The poem, Choyong Danjang, consists of two <coughs> prelude pieces in 13 poem sequences, titled uh, 1 to 13. Okay, let's read the first two poems. Two prelude pieces, the dog. This is a poem. Uh, it is a prose piece. The first poem is a prose, right? One, one dog barks. The other barks in another place. The two bark, clash, bleed. Beneath the low night sky, one dies. The other barely survives. The survivor's sudden cry from his vocal cord lives along, sad trace behind, and helplessly follows the one he's killed. Do you like it? This is a poem. This is a poem, right? Uh, another poem, the second poem. Tears, the lowest part of a man and a woman wept. An Aralia Elata, the lower part of an Aralia Elata was nightly. The man who walked on the sea barefoot is a bird. Only his feet were wet, they say. Can you understand? It's, we can hardly understand it, but we can feel, right? And Choyong Danjang, part one, part 13 poem sequence, one. All day, the sea kept its eyes open like a mouse. From time to time, winds blew from Hanyo Sudo, the, wat the waterway amid Lishli Island, and the young leaves of an Aralia Elata thinly shook the bodies. As the sun set, I heard a leech cry making burrows. Between my ribs, the red, red begonia was shedding its petals. But then the morning came, the sea reopening its eyes like a mouse, fall, fall, fall. A thousand apples were falling deep into the sky. Autumn gone, night come, the year's new snow came, sitting on my sleepy shoulder, with part of the dark cap open the jar. Fruits of red camellias ripened. I saw the white snow fall asleep. Uh, what do you think? You like it? Very beautiful, right? Okay. Uh, poem two. I stole snow, falling in March, wet, new lilac bars, and the flowering camellias on the mountain. The southern sea awakened early. In the furry winter coat, I could not take off. Before I fall asleep that night, I heard the male seal cry out, March come, big snow flakes, wet the white neck of a flower camellia in a deep furrow. Very visual, highly visual. Right? Uh, poem three. The wall walked me, the old pagoda tree walked toward me. In the middle of night, I wakened to see the bronze corridor clock, the long black mantle walked toward me. Beside me, the sea was asleep. And I saw the sleeping sea with a fry of a gray mother sleeping in her arm. To go back to sleep, I would enter the mantle of night, long and dark. With the sea in my arm, I would fall asleep again with the fry of a gray mullet. They also had the sun and the wind brought from Australia at the missionaries through the fans of uh, trifoliate orange shrubs. I saw Japanese yellow roses in winter. On the night of Christ, on the night Christ was born, snow fell. In the visible sky between my eyebrows, few flew one butterfly or two. Poem three. In advance of the snow, a winter rain was falling. The sea had sunk. Where there had been the sea, a warship was letting go of an anchor. The seabird I had seen lay dead. The bird was singing after he died. He was singing in a bit older voice, 
in advance of the snow, the winter rain was falling. The sea had sunk. A man was coming along the coastline without the sea, with that sea in one hand. Very strange, right? Uh, point five. The snow fell this morning for a child's happiness and for a child's longevity. It became two golden calves went up to heavens. At dusk, they came home on father's cart with a single wheel, which makes sound as from a broken bell. The snow fell again at midnight for a child's happiness and for a child's longevity, sprinkling warm water on my sleepy eyelids before sunrise they went back on father's cart, which makes sound as from a broken bell. The snow was falling, the snow calmed the morning and the sea, the camellia flower which had blossomed withered. The snow was falling, a few keys made a fire in a circle. The snow was falling into the fire, onto the necks of the keys. Poem 6. The shadow of a Chinese quince thickened in the dusk, on a little slope lighted by twilight. Some buckthorn flutes were burning in olive green. The man sea sojourned in the flash, fish, ba fish basin in which the fins of a goldfish rusting. Vu whistled the ship twice. The shadow of Chinese quints thickened in the dusk. A jet of water from a toy fountain shut up and fell broken white. Poem 7. In a cage, the bird's dropping smelled rather fragrant at dusk. The eyes of bird caught from the mountain were dreaming. The winter fruits in snow ripened, tasting snow, turning red. Spring cherry blossom petals fell one after another. One boy was running through the water front, holding a toy vein in his mouth. One girl was fading in the dusk, spread in the barley field beyond the cups singing, hair, hair, where are you going? She was fading like a lie. Poem eight. The sea caught in my palm. It was night. The sea was very, very young. The chicks of an adjutant a a bird flapped their feathers. Spring had receded, summer was coming. The sea grew up to my waist and breast, washing off the thick motley on my flesh. When I was running along the white sand bar washed by the sea, I was singing a happy, sad, brilliant song along. On a day that summer, after summer, I saw at the thickest as of the fu full-grown sea, big sunflower cover up the sea bit by bit. Point nine. A crab, most of its legs pulled off shuffled the sluggish along a long furrow in the shady long furrow under the Prothea, Prothesia flowers. The crab moved its body grotesquely. The two eyes, which looked as if on its back, were too heavy to carry. Poem 10. The silver paper angel was crying before some attest, before some attest mustache on her face by the weight of her tears, one shoulder was tipped a bit. Over the angel tipped the shoulder, a cow with spots were giving birth to a calf. While giving birth to a calf, she cried till dawn. That winter snow fell at the edge of the ground. Poem 11. We shouldn't have cried though a camellia petal was falling to the sea from the cliff. The sea was covered with that petal. Then finally the sea revealed its flash as on a sunny day, looking down upon the naked sea, it was neither winter nor spring. It was a snow white sky. We shouldn't, shouldn't have cried through a camellia petal was, though a camellia petal was falling to the, to the sea from the cliff. Poem 12. All went along. At the corner of the playground, the short, sturdy legs of a long chair had been rocking. All went along, all the necks of children were steep slopes covered with snow. Idiot, 
You were singing, air, air, where are you going? You died like a lie. With a streak of blood on your knee, spring came round, winds were blowing again. The sea washed the blood of knee, shed last year. Idiot, you died to go see the sea, go see the sea, and became brilliant sunlight, and became the white wrink wrinkles round my smiling eyes. Poem 13, spring passed. Summer on a completely vacant garden, full leaf clover filled the sea of oak leaves bit by bit. As usual from there, the slow sun began to set. There used to be a fence of a dry foliage orange shrubs. The breathing western sky, pricked by the thorns of the shrubs, left the bird's claw scratch on my side, sore and painful. Uh, very strange poem, right? Uh, do you think it's good translation? Okay, why don't you find the original and read it in Korean? Okay, very beautiful poem. Uh, what is the poem about? Though it may look illogical and surreal because of the characteristics of the poem itself, it is not possible. It is not possible to make a story out of it as the sequence, sequences unfold like a dream, like a lie. But it is possible to construct a story based on the glimpses of images, as Kim Hyun does in his essay, Kim Chun So's Poetic Transforma Transformation. It is a very long essay discussing not only this poem, but also the whole of Kim Chun So's poetry. According to Kim Hyun, the poet has been inter interested in Cho Yong, an ancient personality for almost seven years since he published the novel Cho Yong in 1963. After the uh, novel, the poet published Sleeping Choyong in 1965, Choyong and Choyong Danjang in 1966. And the poet ran a series of the poem sequences, Choyong Danjang, in the literary magazine, Hyundae Shiha, uh, Modernist Poetics, for one and a half years. About the poem, Kim Hyun says, Choyong Danjang is a different poem from Choyong, Choyong Samjang. In the latter poem, there appear the lines that resemble Paul Paul Valéry's line, Le vent se lève, il faut tant de vivre, or, the wind blows, we must leave. However, Cho Yong Danjang was stripped of any of Valéry's influence. Kim Yong points out two things. Kim Chun Su's poem is a pure poem, which makes the outer landscapes represent the poet's inner feelings. In addition, it is more than that. The poem has in it something that can't be replaced by the depiction of outer landscape. It has something absolutely pure. The latter observation is of great importance, but instead of elaborating it, Kim Hyun has spent most of his space applying only the former observation to reading, to reading the poem. The title of the poem is Cho Yong, but nowhere in the poem is the character Cho Yong found. In the prelude, we see two titles, Two Dogs and Tears. In Two Dogs, we see two dogs fight. They bark, clash, and bleed. As a result, one dies, but the other one also dies, leaving a long, sad face behind. In the second poem, Tears, we can guess the third man who walked on the barefoot, on the sea barefoot, must be Cho Yong. If we combine, do you know the story of Cho Yong? Right? Uh, a king uh, went on a picnic, picnic, and he, they were coming back suddenly it's too foggy. And um, one of his uh, uh, men said, uh, we should build a temple. And oh, let's do that. And then the fog cleared. And, uh, and the, the, uh, the king of dragons appeared, and uh, he left uh, one of his sons to, to, to the king. And he, Choyong, right? right? This is a story, right? Uh, as a result, one dies, okay, and uh, wa uh, who walked on, on the sea barefoot must be Choyong. If we combine the two poems into one, the two, two dogs may represent two men who are struggling to gain supremacy, in this case to win the love of a woman. In the second poem, it is clear that the man is sad because the lower parts of the other man and the woman wet. Uh, why did the third man walk on the sea barefoot like a bird? 
Uh, Cho Yong came by sea from another country, according to a legend of Silla Kingdom. He was one of the merchants from Arabia who settled down. This is another story. One day, when he came home, he found four legs under the quilt in his bed. He sings the song of Cho Yong to drive him away. The man uh, who is with his wife is said to be the god of diseases. Cho Yong is to, to disappear suddenly like a bird one day. After the prelude pieces, we have 13 poem sequences. The poet has spent one and a half years to keep writing the sequences. It is not a straightforward story, easy to understand, nor is it a narrative poem or traditional poem that is unfolded log logically. It's like the state of mind of a person who has just had 13 dreams last night, which do not hold together. They don't tell a story, uh, story or one story after another in a logical way. Still, there is some explanation as offered by Kim Hyun, who focuses on four images of the missionary from Australia, of the crab, of the warship, and of the dying boy shedding blood on his knee. Kim Hyun reads this poem as a poet's biography. That is, the poem looks back to the poet's past, which makes sense. Notice then the tense of the uh, poem. All the verbs are in the present tense, except in the last two prior poems. In fact, the two are not included in Choyong Danjong Part 1. The missionary is from Australia and the teacher's husband. And all the images are recollected from what he saw, felt, and experienced. The clock, a long chair, a fence of uh, trifoliate orange shrubs, the Japanese field of roses. These these originate from his vast poetic reservoir of images, which he uses all through the poem. This, in the sequence, uh, uh, in the sequence, uh, third poem, for example, uh, for instance, the the, the walk, the wall walked me, the old pagoda tree walked toward me. In the middle of night, I awakened to see the bronze corridor clock in the long mantle or black mantle walk toward me. They also had a son and the wind brought from Australia at the missionaries. Through the fence of a trifoliate orange shrubs, I saw Japanese yellow roses in winter. Not only that, but the crab, the warship, the boy Kale are from his poetic reservoir of images. He spent a child in Dongyang, which is a beautiful port in southern Korea. It is surrounded by mountains, and in the sea outside the port, there are many islands scattered. In winter, and early spring, camellia flowers are in bloom. Two of his friends appear in the pond. One is a girl who killed the crab, pulling, pulling the legs, though she is not mentioned in the pond. The other is a boy who will play a game. He runs into the street where cars are running. And when the, uh, when the car squishes to a stop, just before him, he sticks his tongue out and runs away. But finally, a rock runs him over killing him with his knee, shedding a streak of blood. First, there is an image of a crab crawling in the shadow of Forthia uh, flowers. It is a crab that his friend had killed by pulling his leg in his shoulder. According to Kim Hyun, who makes the comparison between this poem and the poet's novel, Cho Yong, the incident has remained in his subconscious, which finds an expression of his castration anxiety in the poem. A crab, most of his legs pulled, shuffled sluggish along long furrow, in the, sh in, in the shady long furrow under the forsythia uh, flowers. The crab moved his body grotesquely. The two eyes, which looked as if it on her back, were too heavy to carry. The other incident in which his friend was run over by a truck is also described in the novel and in the poem. The image of boy is freeing but strong. Idiot, you were singing, hair, hair, where are you going? You died like a lie with a streak of blood on your knee. Uh, Kim Hyun wanted to write pure poetry. Kim chun Su wanted to write pure poetry by saying that he sought for a state beyond being human or a state of being in a dream. That is to say, he wants his poetry to be stripped of things human to be free of ethics, to make outer scenes represent inner feelings, but the poet cannot define his poetry as pure because there is a continuous struggle in, in his mind between an effort to overcome his inner complexes, 
another effort to free those complexes. As Kim Hyun pointed out, the poet depicts what lies between the conscious and subconscious, as in Marshall <coughs> Proust's beginning in his story, A la cherche du temps perdu, uh, in search of the lost time, a lost time. The young, the young, young leaves of an Ralia Ilata, thinly shook bodies, the red, red begonia was shedding its petals, fall, 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 a thousand apples are falling deep into the sky with part of dark kept open ajar. Fruits of red camellias ripen. This is the key image of the plants in the poem. And with these central images, the poet externalizes all kinds of childhood memories. The sun and the wind brought from Australia, where there had been the sea. A ship was letting go of an anchor. A jet of water from a toy mountain shut up and fell broken white. A boy was running through the waterfront holding a toy vein in his mouth. One girl was trading in the dark, spread in the barely f barley field beyond the copse, singing her and where, where are you going? She was trading like a lie. Crap, most of his legs pulled out. The cow with his parts were giving birth to cow. You, di you died like a lie with a streak of blood on your knee. The concluding poem, sequence uh, 13, is a synoptic summation of all in the subconscious externalized in this poem and his poetics as well. Spring passed, summer on a completely vacant garden, full leaf clover filled the sea of oak trees bit by bit. As usual from there, the slow sun began to set. There used to be a fence of uh, trifolded orange shrubs. The blooding western sky, pricked by the thorns of shrubs, left the bird's claw scratch on my side, sore and painful. Another important image is that of sea. The, the South Sea of the Port Tongyang is hometown. It is connotative. It is symbolic and allegorical, which represents mother. Kim Hyun comments on the different images of sea as follows. First, a look at uh, point one. All day, the sea kept its eyes open like a mouse. The sea is here compared with the mouse, revealing its unconscious expression of its attitude toward life. It is an object of contemplation, as in the poem of Valery, Rango, and Malarme. So the sea represents sweet trace of light instead of hard life on the sea. The sea also represents the poet's consciousness. It is symbolic of what's on his mind. The sea had sunk. A man was coming along the coastline without the sea, with the dead sea in his hand. Third, the sea is an entity, and mother is also a being. The sea has many attributes of mother, the sea, like mother, feels like uh, fine things to the poet, which find subtle variations as in the following stanzas. <coughs> with the sea in my arm, I would fall asleep again with a fry of gray mullet. The sea caught, is caught in my palm, it was night, and the sea was very, very young. The chicks of uh, adjutant bird uh, flapped their feathers, Spring had receded, the summer was coming, the sea grew up to my waist and the breast, washing off the thick mostly of my flesh. The sea was covered with, the, with that paddle, then finally the sea revealed its flesh as on a sunny day. Now, let me focus on some of the most beautiful, po beautiful poems. I recall the poem sequence, uh, poems now. Instead of interpreting them, I will just look at each poem as a tableau. A dream is a dream whether it makes sense or not. Each imitates the state of mind being in flux with the interplay of the subconscious and conscious. Just as, for instance, water flows and mixes, or the wind blows and circles and dances like dead leaves on the ground. Each poem is independent from, or loosely dependent on what follows. There is a conclusion as there is an end to a dream. I see poem two as one of the most beautiful and most important poems as well. I saw snow falling in March, wet, new lilac boughs, and the flowering camellias on the mountain. The southern sea awakened early in the furry winter's coat I could not take off. Before I fall asleep that night, I heard the male sail cry out, March come, big snow flakes wet the white neck of flowering camellia in a deep furrow. The key image is the wet, which has been repeated in the parallel poem, Tears. The snow in this poem feels refreshing 
giving life to lilacs and camellias, making them flower. When it falls on the white neck of a flowering camellia, it even feels sensual, or at least lovely. The image reappears in poem six. Uh, the, the, the poem was falling into the fire and into the necks of kids. In poem two, 12, all went along, all the wicks, all the necks of children were steep slopes covered with snow. Maybe Kim Young is a Freudian who thinks that the, to what is a basic condition for both men of nature, he often gives the image of sea as well. In the same vein, the poem seems to be involved in the human affairs in the parallel poem Tears, but the next 13 poems, he is neither involved nor so sad. He is a step away from the world and observes it in smiles, though life gives him pain, as in the concluding poem. You died like a lie, like a streak of, st a streak of blood on, on your knee. Spring came round, winds were blowing again. The sea washed the blood of knees shed last year. Idiot, you died to see the sea and became brilliant sunlight became the little wrinkles around my smiling eyes. As usual, from there, the slow sun began to set. There used to be a fence of uh, trifoliate orange shrub. The breathing western sky, pricked by the thorns of the shrub, left the bird's claw scratch on my side, sore and painful. Another poem is a tableau, which is strikingly beautiful, dreaming in a state of flux. Look at poem three. It is the dreamish of the poems. He is dreaming back of his kindergarten days. The old pagoda tree, the bronze corridor clock, the fence of tree foliage, orange shrub, Japanese yellow roses, butterflies. In the midst of all those recollected, the sea is a central image. The sea is near him, near the coastline, sleeping there with a fry of a gray mullet slipping in her arm. But then the sea is in his arm. When he falls asleep again with a fry of gray mullet, the dreaming process is thus described. Beside me, the sea was asleep, and I saw the sleeping sea with a fry of uh, gray mullet sleeping in the round. To go back to sleep, I would enter the mantle of night, long and dark, with the sea in my arm. I would fall asleep again with a fry of gray mullet. In the middle of Choyong Tanjang, poem th 17, uh, has all major images that appear neatly, but not very coherently. Yes, it is very beautiful, surreal tableau. A bird in the cage is dreaming, is gnawing on fruit. Charlie blossoms in bloom, the boy is running with a vein in his mouth. Along the waterfront, one girl is feeding in the dusk like a lie. In a cage, the bird's dropping smelled rather fragrant at dusk. The eyes of bird caught from the mountain were dreaming. The winter fruits in snow, ripened, tasting snow, turning red. Spring cherry blossom petal petals fell one after another. One boy was running through the waterfront, holding a toy vein in his mouth. One girl was trading in the dusk, spread in the barley field beyond the cups, singing, hair, hair, where are you going? She was fading like light. The poet keeps dreaming, and in one moment, he feels as if he were a crab. Despite this, the whole poem is not that sad. For the poet is an objective observer and speaker. He remembers and externalizes in this poem many things he had experienced in his childhood. The poem has not cheapened all his childhood, childhood experiences by not making it sentimental. He just keeps collecting key images, put them in his tableau in such a way that all of them sound and look surreal and vivid. If he tried to tell us about his story in a logical way, it would become a very boring narrative. This had been a necessary practice for Kim Chun Su to develop a new kind of poetry. As a result, as we know from literary history of Korea, he could create better poetry in his later poetic career. Despite the above analysis, how can we read Cho Yong Danjang, the poem? The moment we begin an analysis, the individual poem sequences, I call them poems now, of the poem, of the poem disappear. The individual sequ uh, poem, uh, poem sequences disappear. We can't see the beauty of each poem. I think we, sh we should see each poem as a tableau with beautiful images. It is a picture poem which is symbolic, allegorical, psychological, biological, cultural, 
ecological as well as modernistic and postmodernistic in form. Unlike painting, a poem's media is words. Each word has a meaning, so eventually a sentence must have a meaning. But each poem here makes something we can't make sense of. It is like an abstract painting, a painting that uses the medium colors that do not make a form. So the analogy of Cheung Danjong and then abstract painting is established. Should we focus on the signifier or significant in the poem to form an image, tasting and feeling the texture of each sentence image in each poem? We could be one. We could be one with the poem as if in a dream. It is a poem that, that is pure and absolute. This kind of poem is rare, as Shakespeare's Phoenix and Toll is one of the rare poems that are pure. In the last century, Gerstein has began to do it again by writing a long poem, Tender Button, which revolutionizes the American poetry. In Korea, Kim chun Su is one of the poets who have done it along with Yi Sang. Kim chun Su is seen as one of the best poets in modern uh, poetry of Korea and could compare well with WBH in English poetry. Kim has experimented in nonsense poetry for almost 30 years as seen above, while Yeats has experimented in automatic writing for almost 40 years, resulting in a vision. It is a remarkable corollary that both represent the best of Korean and English poetry of the last century. Okay, thank you. We'll take a 10 minutes break.